Tonight in the foothills of the Appalachians, a battle of two sides looking for early season footing. Chattanooga in search of any offense while Lexington on the hunt for a more resistant defense. Two teams in need of an early season boost tonight. Chattanooga Red Wolves and Lexington Sporting Club. We welcome you to CHI Memorial Stadium in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm Ken Levicka, and here's a look at the USL League One standings, and there you see so far, not so great. Lexington sits 10th, same point total as Chattanooga Red Wolves, last year's runner-up in USL League One. Only two goals on the campaign, so these two sides are in desperate need of three points in the table. Chattanooga going to be looking for Walter Varela to keep up his strong play. Varela, you see here, was one of the heroes in the lone victory of the season for Chattanooga. That was a home triumph over one Knoxville right here at CHI. Varela, who has a history with first-year Chattanooga head coach Ziggy Koratowski. They were together in San Diego, Albion, San Diego. He will need to be a big presence into the attack. Now for Lexington, Nico Brown. The youngster, Nico Brown, formerly of Greenville Triumph. He has come in and he has been an impactful attacking player for this Lexington side under Sam Stockley. And with these two teams looking to finally break through on the attack, Nico Brown looms large in tonight's starting 11. Chattanooga, Lexington, two teams looking to get out of their early season swoon. Will they be able to? We'll find out. It's USL League One on a Saturday night on ESPN+. Plus. It's here, Ford Truck Month. Come and get the best deals on Ford F-150. The only truck to offer available pro power on board and an interior work surface so you can get it all done. All part of Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck, 46 years straight and counting. Get 2.9 for 60 plus up to 2,500 with eligible trade-in. Learn more about pickup and delivery and remote service at your local Ford dealer. The future is in these foothills. The world's fastest internet from EPB is in homes from Hickson to Highland Park. In classrooms from East Lake to East Brainerd and in reach of those striving to learn more, be more, achieve more. The future is here with fiber optic speeds up to 25 gigs. There's a beat in all of us. It drives us, it inspires us, and it pushes us through. It is there in preparation, it is there in battle, it is there in defeat, and success. It's the engine, it's our guide. And this beat is my own. This beat is how I live. And this is how I hydrate. Body on the sport water, hydration for athletes. The shirts worn by the walkout kids tonight brought to you by Brainerd Baptist School, expanding minds, preparing hearts as these two sides take to the pitch here at CHI Memorial Stadium. This is a battle of two USL League One sides looking to get something going, string some results together. And at tonight's starting 11 brought to you by the Center for Sports Medicine and Orthopedics, the official sports medical group of the Chattanooga Red Wolves because life happens in motion. Chattanooga, the 11 for Ziggy Koratowski. The injury still affecting the 11. Christian Enriquez, his ankle issue, so a lot of pressure on the shoulders of Alex Tejera at the top of this 4-2-3-1. And Mo Espinoza, last season, eight goals, seven assists for the runners-up in USL League One, looking for his first goal of this campaign. He features in tonight's 11. Now for Lexington Sporting Club under Sam Stockley. You have a back four, Mohamed Seha, Fox, and Green. Out tonight is Cesar Mario. He has a red card suspension, or he would likely be in the back line. Owen Green, he has one goal this season, and it's all hands on deck for Lexington on the attack tonight against a stingy Chattanooga defensive effort. Those are the starting 11s for this one 
here this evening. Crowd continuing to file in here in Chattanooga. Chattanooga Red Wolves, Lexington Sporting Club. There's the whistle. We are underway Saturday night football in USL League One right here on ESPN Plus. And it is great to be here with you. I am Ken Levicka. And as we discussed in the open, Chattanooga and Lexington both only one victory on the season. Chattanooga, one victory, two defeats, one draw. Lexington, one victory, three defeats, and one draw, both sides with four points in the league one table. This is the first meeting between these two sides, at least in an official capacity. They did face one another in the preseason. That ended in a 1-1 draw. Chattanooga has really fought it on the attack, and that is a lot of what we discussed with first-year headman Ziggy Koritowski this week when we were able to chat with him. It was how do you make this attack more dynamic? How do you find a way to put shots on goal? Not only that, find the back of the net. And the prevailing response was, well, the movement off the ball just is not good enough, and there's an early misplay from the goalkeeper putting it too tall over his midfield Ricardo Jerez is his second appearance of the season in goal for Chattanooga a battle in the corner good effort and it's won back by Chattanooga Manuel Madrid doing the dirty work down there and this will trickle across the midfield strike. And there's the first touch tonight for the opposing goalkeeper, Austin Causey. Causey, seven saves this season, but eight goals against. The defense for Lexington has been its major issue. And for the second most goals conceded in USL League One, this Lexington Sporting Club side, and there's our first foul of the match. Let's we'll see if the trainer has to make an appearance here. That's Mo Espinoza. A bit hobbled on that ankle. Looks like he went boot to boot. Espinoza, a native of San Diego, was on this Chattanooga side a year ago. For Espinoza, this is his fourth appearance of the season, all four of them. This is his first start, I should say, of the season. All three previously had come in as a substitute. And this is a Chattanooga side that has been ransacked by injuries and issues outside of their control. No, Christian Enriquez, he has an ankle problem. You hear Paez has a foot injury. Nico Brown getting physical along the end line, committing the foul, and Chattanooga gets play restarted quickly. And then Richard Renteria has had visa issues, and so he's been unavailable for Ziggy Koritowski. So none of those have helped Chattanooga try and find a groove because they just don't have a number of members of what they believe to be core contributors. There's a high boot. Are we going to see a card? I think the answer is going to be perhaps Espinoza goes to ground again. And our referee, Austin Saini, he's going to usher Kalen Fox away 
from where that incident took place. And indeed, there was the first yellow of the match, and it comes in the fifth minute to the veteran, the former FC Tucson man, Kalen Fox. Fox comes up with that high boot and then makes contact with Espinoza. Now, in Fox's defense, Espinoza was starting to crouch low. Fox came up with a boot that he felt was below his waist. Certainly was close. Ladies and gentlemen, a caution has been issued by the referee to Lexington SC player number five, Kalen Fox. This yellow Austin card is presented Saini by the Tennessee said, I saw enough of that. That was reckless. And so our first booking of the night, Kalen Fox of Lexington. Kalen Fox was a key contributor to FC Tucson. USL League won the past couple of seasons. FC Tucson has since made the decision to go to USL League Two. And Fox was on that FC Tucson side that made the postseason two years ago here in USL League One. Chattanooga on the attack. In the left corner, it's Aaron Lombardi. The Argentine onto his left foot, pushes to the outside of the area, trying to feed it into the box. Lexington able to defend that. And now the newcomers to USL League One on the move into the attacking half. Mitchell plays it forward into the area. Back heel, left foot strike right at Evans, who is able to easily make the stop. A lot of pace on that shot, but Hedda is equal to the task. Lexington right back on it. Bainham. Pushed off to the right side. Now on to Green. Good movement here from Lexington. The spacing is strong. Diouf rolls it to the edge of the area. Lexington staying patient. Chattanooga getting its defensive form. This fed into the middle of the area and a foul. Bainham whistled for the infraction, getting physical, trying to win that ball in the box. Here's a look at the scoring opportunity, our first shot on goal. That left-footed blast from Tate Robertson, but right at the keeper, Ricardo Jerez. And that is his first save of the season. Select is the official match ball supplier of USL League One and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit www.us.select-sport.com for the latest select products, specials, and more. Select the player's choice. Lexington down a starter tonight, Cesar Mario was shown red at the 27 minute mark in the 2-0 loss to Greenville last Saturday. So he is unavailable for Sam Stockley tonight. That means that Eric Seha Gonzalez gets his first start. A bit unsure in the area off the head of Nico Cardona but enough to send it on to the keeper with what turned out to be a unexpectedly dangerous ball and Chattanooga back on possession. Long ball over the top. Lexington does well to win this back and on the move. Pila de Lamini. Tolomini makes his way up the far touch line. Flamini. Now Duth.
Good defensive effort here early from the host side. Last season, Chattanooga, thanks to a late push in the final seven weeks of the season, finished with 12 victories, seven defeats, 11 draws. That was good for fourth in the league. And then, thanks to a pair of 1-0 victories, won an extra time against the defending champs, Union Omaha, the other against the one seed, Richmond Kickers, able to get into the USL League One Championship match. That was a 2-1 defeat at the hands of Tormenta. Perez comes up and puts it back. Chattanooga staying patient. Mikhail Williams will send it back on to Hedez as Chattanooga attempts to play it out of the back. Lexington pressing. And now Chattanooga will look to begin its journey into the midfield. On the turn, long ball forward. Perhaps something developing here. Varela. Varela receives it back. On his right foot, gives it a go. And he had a man lurking on the back post. Unable to get a touch on it. And it sails out of play. But Varela, at least making Causey think about it. Riley Kraft was in the vicinity, but I don't think he knew just how close that attempt was gonna come to finding his foot. So he didn't actually make a play on it or attempt to make a play on it. That was a shot that almost resembled a delivery with a lot of pace. Lexington much more fast paced than Chattanooga on the ball and here they come again. Chattanooga wins it right back, Espinoza. Gonna launch this forward. Long ball's the name of the game here early for Chattanooga, Barella. Wrap on his right hand, heads to his right foot. Oh, well done, sheds a defender, tries to play it through, and this rolls across the end line, making that horizontal run was Alex Tejera. Barella frustrated with himself, but Varela has also been the man most on the front foot in possession tonight for Chattanooga. Ziggy Koratowski was saying over and over this week, we just need better movement off the ball. I'd like in the attacking third for us to be more vertical. And you can already see early shades of that here tonight. The long balls have been on target the few times that Chattanooga has been able to Pick out some players on the run. The vertical attack certainly looks like perhaps it could yield something at some point this evening. Kraft tracks it down, now back tracks. And Chattanooga goes to work. One booking so far, Caitlin Fox for Lexington, one shot on goal, and that was Tate Robertson for Lexington. But Chattanooga has had the better part of the ball here in the last five minutes. Speaking of, Varela just outside the area, into the box, Varela, right foot, pushes to the middle, sliding, loose ball clearance for Lexington. Chattanooga crashing the box, Lexington able to survive that. Espinoza wins possession back. Here's a low ball near post, no. It caroms 30 yards away, Lexington trying to get out on the counter. There is an urgency in which Chattanooga is playing right now in the attack. And another midfield giveaway for Lexington. They've become a bit sloppy on the ball. Kraft. You see Varela lurking on the near side and a whistle. We're gonna have a stoppage. There's an injured Lexington player. You can see him writhing top left part of your screen. That's Tariq Muhammad, the left back 
for Lexington. He's grabbing at his ankle. Not sure if this knock came at that last sequence in the box. With Chattanooga attacking, if this was off the ball, if this was related to any play. We're gonna take a look here, what we believe to be where Muhammad suffered this injury, and it would come in that sequence in the box. Barilla lays it off, and then Kraft and Muhammad get tied up and Muhammad immediately reached for that ankle. Yep, that certainly is it. It appears to be a left ankle issue for Tariq Muhammad, the Canadian. He got his legs tied up with Riley Kraft, who attempted a sliding touch on that ball. There's Sam Stockley. He spent a long time in his coaching career at the developmental levels with youth teams. And here he is in what he calls a dream job with Lexington Sporting Club. Gets to start a franchise from a soccer perspective in his own vision, teach young players, construct teams, oversee academies. He was just cloud nine even with this one three and one start to the season. Talking with him this week, he is just absolutely in his element. Muhammad. Obviously still in a lot of pain. You can see it in his face. Talking with Sam Stockley. And it looks like he might be coming off. He is really upset. Is he gonna stay on? He's reacting as if he was gonna come off. Well, he's gonna be held off for now, and he just came back on. Thought maybe that conversation was him being told, hey, this is a bad enough knock, we're gonna have to sub you off, but for now, Tariq Muhammad stays on. Long ball, Varela can't pick him out that time. And it's headed out of play, an attacking third throw in for Chattanooga. Here's Walefi, the popular Brazilian midfielder for Chattanooga, fan favorite, veteran presence. <laughs> 55 appearances over four seasons for Ralefi. He has battled injuries throughout the four years here in Chattanooga. This is a fourth appearance on the season. Chattanooga back into the attacking third, turning with it. Along the end line, Tahera. And a sliding tackle out of play by Muhammad using that left ankle that he was clutching just moments ago. And it's our first corner of the match. And now Muhammad has to go down to a knee. Yep. They're gonna have to bring the physio back out. You could see her, she was just standing there waiting. I really don't know if Muhammad is gonna be able to continue. He is having a really hard time with that ankle. Credit to him, winning hard with that tackle. Good, strong play, but it may just be too much pain for him to overcome. He's got a real heavy limp on that ankle and Sam Stockley has a decision to make. He may have to, in the 20th minute, Go to his bench. You saw Stockley walking down to Muhammad as Chattanooga prepares for a corner. Oh, they did call a foul. It's a free kick. That's going to come from just about six yards outside the area. 
Ladies and gentlemen, a substitution for the Lexington SC. And there the is the substitution we believed was coming. Drew Patterson will take out the injured Tariq Muhammad. So Drew Patterson played his college ball at Marist in Cal Poly. He'll make appearance number four on the season. His second time as a substitute as he rushes on. And Espinoza prepares. Correction, that is for number 57, Tariq Muhammad. So an opportunity here for Chattanooga. Only two goals on the season. Can they strike and take the early advantage? Espinoza whips in a left-footed cross, headed to the top of the area and headed out of danger. Well defended by Lexington, a chase to the touchline, and it'll be a throw in for Chattanooga Red Wolves. Paoli pushes it into the defensive half for Chattanooga. Coca-Cola, the exclusive soft drink of the Chattanooga Red Wolves, that's Coca-Cola. Chattanooga heads back into the midfield. They have had a significant advantage in possession here in this opening half. Though still yet to have a shot on goal. That belongs to Lexington. Inside of the first five minutes, a blast from Tate Robertson, but it was right at the Chattanooga keeper, Ricardo Jerez. a long ball in chase to Hera. Unable to get there and then a foul. And this will belong to Lexington. To Hera getting a bit too physical. Lexington and Chattanooga battled in the preseason. That was back on March 4th, a 1-1 draw in that exhibition. Lexington's lone victory of the season came against the defending champions, and there's a rough tackle. Coming in a bit too hard was Nico Cardona, and he gets whistled appropriately. Austin Saini, our referee, comes over to have a chat with him. Just a bit clunky, nothing excessive, but Cardona flat-footed just stuck his leg out and drew the whistle. The lone victory, I was saying, it, April 15th, home victory over Tormenta. That set up a raucous celebration at Georgetown College. That, for now, the home for Lexington Sporting Club. Nico Brown on his right foot. That gets... Deflected away, but across the end line, and this will be corner number one of the night, and it goes to the visitors from Lexington. Robertson will handle the duties in the near corner. This artificial surface here at CHI Memorial Stadium. This, the first soccer only facility built in the state of Tennessee. It's no longer the only one, but it was the first one constructed. Opened in 2020. Robertson puts his right foot into it, out swinging corner. He's punched high up into the air. Lexington on the chase. Robertson, a high swooping corner, headed back into play. And headed out of the area. Punched back on. Oh, that was precariously bouncing near the six yard box. But Mikhail Williams able to see it on the head as. Took a bit of contact at head as it appeared. No whistle, but he's able to safely hold on to the ball. Yeah, that ball had a lot of spin on it. 
Hedda has actually had to move to his left to grab that ball on the hop. It had a lot of English on it. Entering minute number 26. Chattanooga zero, Lexington zero. Bonnie Young is the official sports drink of the Chattanooga Red Wolves. Perez left foots this away. Cardona on the turn, gives it over, gives it away. Long throw in, found the mark. Bainham looking for some support. Now Machel lobs it into the box. Wanted Nico Brown a bit too tall for him and a side winding distribution for Jerez. Lexington starting to get back on possession now. We have a much more swift attack, a much quicker attacking identity than Chattanooga does. Two very different offensive approaches on full display here tonight. Fox trying to spray it to the far side. A battle. Robertson kept his footing, beat Espinosa to the ball. Just shed him. Now Diouf. And his poor pass picked off. Look at this from Chattanooga. This is going to be a card. That was an easy call. Machel just dragged Manuel Madrid to the turf. Madrid looked like a video game. Blasting through any sort of resistance to get into the attack in half before he was ridden to the ground by Charlie Machel. Look at this effort from Manuel Madrid. That was superb. So the second yellow shown to Lexington. Machel just moments ago, Kalen Fox early in this one in the fifth minute. Will Leffy and Espinoza stand over this ball. That effort from Madrid brought fans out of their seats here in Chattanooga. Espinoza flips this off to the far side. Varela full out of speed. But he is bodied off the ball and then boxed away, and that was a fantastic defensive performance from Drew Patterson, the substitute who replaced Tariq Muhammad about 10 minutes ago. Check out the new 2023 Chattanooga Red Wolves kit along with T-shirts, scarves, novelty items, and a whole lot more at ChattanoogaRedWolves-SC.com. Chattanooga came into tonight second in USL League One in passing accuracy. Now, if you bring that up to Ziggy Koratowski, he's going to say, great, we have two goals on the season. But there's at least something in the attack to build off of when you're completing passes in an 82% clip. That's only going to help as you start to find your way more attacking the goal. Now this is where the problems come. Chattanooga 11th in shots attempted, keeping in mind this is only their fifth match of the season. But 11th in shots with 37, 11th in USL League One in conversion rate, 8%. No matter how many matches you've played, that conversion percentage, that conversion rate at 8%, you're gonna have problems winning matches. Lexington working out of the back. Trying to 
curl a ball forward was Owen Green. It was unsuccessful, and that'll be chunked out of there. But one right back by Lexington. Flamini able to win it back. Now he's back on the ball. Flamini. Fox. Back to Pila Dlamini. Heavy touch. Still maintaining possession. Ripped to the ground. No whistle. Owen Green. But Dlamini has been a pest for Chattanooga. He wins it back for the visitors. Mitchell is looking for Diouf. But he was in traffic. Chattanooga wins it back. It was off to the races for a moment. But ending that threat on the counter was Chattanooga. Both clubs have gone a bit stagnant here on the attack as we are past the half an hour mark. Ken Levicka with you. CHI Memorial Stadium in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Two sides, four points in the table. We're only about a month and a half in. And there is only three points separating where Chattanooga and Lexington are, 11th and 10th respectively. And the top six, that said, early warning signs on the attack for Chattanooga, two goals on the year. Early warning signs for Lexington on the defensive end. As they have conceded the second most goals in USL League One heading into tonight. Lombardi. Surveyed his options, decided to play it on to Ricardo Jerez. Jerez is the number two keeper here at Chattanooga. Carlos Aviles, who is the number one, and there is a late whistle and a foul. It was called by Austin Saini, the referee. Aviles coming into tonight in USL League One play. He was third in USL League One with 13 saves. Jerez getting the nod tonight. Picked up his first save of the season in his second appearance. And there you saw Sam Stockley in front of the Lexington Sporting Club bench directing traffic. Two of the four first year men leading their USL League One clubs are here tonight. Stockley for Lexington, Ziggy Koratowski for Chattanooga. You also have Mark McKeever at one Knoxville and Dominic Casciato at Union Omaha. This 2023 USL League One season already off to a fascinating start. Charlotte on top of the table, North Carolina right behind them. Chattanooga coming off a 3-0 defeat at the hands of North Carolina FC on Friday. That was the first ever Chattanooga loss to NCFC. Chattanooga trying to push forward. Good ball to the outside. Here's a low cross. It couldn't be snuck through, but a corner coming for Chattanooga Red Wolves. Ernesto Espinoza pushing the action along with Alex Tejera and Riley Kraft. It was Tejera. Pushing it off of Fox and earning the corner. This is lobbed too far out of play. And that
that set piece. That corner goes for an up. That Char Chattanooga corner was brought to you by Ford, the official domestic car partner of the Chattanooga Red Wolves. Bainham falls to the turf, able to cradle the ball between his legs, keep possession. Now Diouf. Nifty pushes it to the outside. Dangerous cross headed off the mark by Diouf. Pushed it wide right. It was just a bit too tall for him. He got a head on it and he was completely unmarked. Oh, this was a delicious delivery by Robertson, and he had Diouf on the back post. Just an inch or two too tall for Atest Diouf, or it would be 1-0 Lexington. Foot race. Tejero wasn't going to get there, but Austin Causey came up a bit clunky and delivered it into the third row, and here's an attacking third throw in for Chattanooga. We have a weather delay in Georgia, the defending champs Tormenta and Richmond. Well, there's a Tormenta in South Georgia. Thunderstorm, thunderstorms, and they have not been able to get on the way yet. A swing and a miss there in the back from Seha, but he's able to recover, and Lexington slows things down along its back line. North Carolina just doing North Carolina things. Taking it to Greenville, 2-0, 49th minute. Lexington an opportunity, Diouf to the top of the box. Right footed shot, and the defense able to stay composed, and then that is sailed over the bar. Manuel Madrid able to step in front of that first attempt. And it stays nil-nil. Bainham, Madrid easily punching that away with a left foot, and then Bainham sent that one soaring into the Chattanooga night. Already one final today. Forward Madison and Charlotte went nil-nil. So North Carolina, if that result holds, they will be the new top of the table after tonight in USL League One. That rolled out of play. It'll be a Chattanooga throw-in. And they have just started just outside of Omaha, Union Omaha, and the hailstorm of Northern Colorado. Foot race here for Tahera. Tahera able to get to the ball. Tahera 1v2, and he's played off of it by Robertson. Retreated back from his attacking midfield position to claim victory to that ball. Nico Brown hasn't had a touch in a while. Here he comes. Put on the brakes, and now he puts on the burners. Brown into the attacking half. Brown into the middle. Machel. On to Atest to you. Some room to operate to you. Between one defender, two defenders, three defenders. Took some contact, went down. Austin Saini said play on. Lexington does. Nico Brown. Sent to the back post. Headed high into the air. Still dangerous here for Chattanooga. Back onto the feet of Dlamini. And now Green. This is headed up into the air by Cardona for Chattanooga. Red Wolves defending hard here, and Varela that would have blasted off of Robertson and give Chattanooga the possession. And 
This has been a physical match to this point. You can hear the whistle in the background. Austin Saini is telling Nico Cardona, hey, throw it in. And after all of that, Cardona did throw it in and had it blasted right back off of him out of play for a Lexington attacking third throw in. So we sent to the edge of the area. Diouf, he has been active in this opening stanza. Flamini dispossessed. Barella plays it to the middle. Kraft goes right back to Varela. He's gonna hold up. Nearly lost it out of play. Paoli, the Californian. Now some room to run momentarily for Lombardi. Paoli has to defer to the midfield for Walefi. Chattanooga. Continuing to try and find an opening. That opening closed, and then Varela comes up over the top and has a foul call right in front of the referee. Don't miss a minute of the action in 2023, whether your club's on the road or at home. Catch nearly every second of USL League One action on ESPN Plus, the home to the USL La Liga, the Bundesliga, UFC, and more. Sign up today at plus.espn.com. That's ESPN Plus. Kalen Fox, he's on a yellow tonight. Push into the attacking third. Now Machel on to Owen Green, the right back. Nico Brown, the former Greenville Triumph man. His cross had a man for a moment in the middle. It was deflected away. De Youf. was looking for Drew Patterson. He was making a horizontal run at the, end, uh, at the edge of the area, but he had a ton of traffic around him. Lexington's been asking questions, but there hasn't been anything overly dangerous. They did force Ricardo Jerez to make a save in the opening minutes. And then Atez de Youf was unmarked on a cross to the back post, but it was too tall off the right foot of Tate Robertson and it flew wide of the goal. Lexington has had more opportunities. Chattanooga, though, has been more consistent in the opposition area, at least making its presence felt. But still no goals to show for it. And that's been the story especially of Chattanooga's season so far here in match number five for the Red Wolves. Lamini tried to push one through, one back by Chattanooga without much of an issue. Espinoza, strong ball forward. Riley Kraft, Kraft puts on the brakes. Now to his left foot, to the back post, and it's wide off the head of Espinoza. That was an ambitious cross. Espinoza was on his back foot just momentarily off balance couldn't put it on goal that was pretty well constructed there you see Espinoza leak out just outside the six yard box wanted to try and direct it up or right and because he had to lean back a bit put it off target but that's good good build up from Chattanooga here in the waning moments of the opening half it certainly feels like a match that's going to feature a goal or two. Green. Brown taken down at the edge of the area. The referee says corner, but no foul. Oh boy, that was close. As Mikhail Williams came sliding in on Nico Brown. 
Yeah, Williams got to the ball first before he made the contact with Brown. That's a good call from Austin Saini, and he made the point to the corner with conviction. Well done. Good referee. And a good defensive play by Mikhail Williams as well. Three minutes of additional time here in the opening half. Largely from the injury that was suffered by Tariq Muhammad, his ankle that eventually forced him out of this match. Robertson delivers the corner. Low and on target, headed away. Nico Brown, left foot, couldn't find its way through traffic. A bicycle attempt into the arms of Hedes. Drew Patterson gave it an acrobatic go. Hedes right there, equal to the task. Watches it into his chest, and we remain scoreless. This was a dangerous corner. Nico Brown, left foot. Again, there were a lot of bodies in front. And then Patterson, all Hedes had to do was take one step to his right. Made sure that that ball was collected safely. And it's all smiles for the man from Guatemala City. If I can have your attention, please. There is a white BMW. He represented Guatemala in the CONCACAF Nations League. He was the captain of that side in his pro career. Nearly 500 appearances, 176 of those clean sheets, and he's clean so far tonight. Molini. He's sent on a hop into the area, cleared away. Unable to be kept in, though, by Riley Kraft, and Lexington will have the throw in. As we are past the midway point, only three minutes of added time. Flamini. Now to Green. Green whips one in. This headed out of play. Lexington with the throw. Chattanooga trying to fight off Lexington here in the closing moments. This will be delivered on to Jerez as he reaches up and over Will Baina. The 4-4-2 tonight for Lexington Sporting Club. Baina and Diouf, the two forwards at the top of the formation. Diouf has been much more impactful than Baina has. Chattanooga conceding a lot of throw-ins here in this three minutes of added time. Looks like a deep throw in is coming, and it is. But it's to no one in particular, and there is the whistle. The first half comes to an end, both sides have their opportunities, albeit fleeting, but certainly signs of life from the Chattanooga attack for Lexington. They certainly grew into the match in the final 10 to 15 minutes of the half. And so as both teams look to make adjustments and find a way to break through, they'll head to the locker room. It is halftime, 45 minutes in the books here at CHI Memorial Stadium. Chattanooga Red Wolves 0, Lexington Sporting Club 0, and we start the halftime show after this. This is USL League 1 on ESPN+. Plus. I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's here, Ford Truck Month. Come and get the best deals on Ford F-150. The only truck to offer available pro power on board and an interior work surface so you can get it all done. All part of Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck, 46 years straight and counting. Get 2.9 for 60 plus up to 2,500 with eligible trade-in. Learn more about pickup and delivery and remote service at your local Ford dealer.
I need to try it first. Halftime brought to you by Star Community Builders. Their newest development, the Tennessee Gateway, features CHI Memorial Stadium, brand new townhomes, apartment living, and four lease commercial office and retail. To learn more about Chattanooga's ultimate live, work, play community, contact info at star-cb.com. Star Community Builders, creating the visions of tomorrow, today. No one better then Mark Schoenster to give you a look at last Saturday's USL League One action and bring you USL League One US Open Cup goals. Mark, take it away. Let's take you through the action from Saturday of last week, starting with the Independence and Central Valley Fuego. The Jacks at the top of the table and looking to stay in that spot. Nick Spielman flicking this one in and giving the Jacks the one goal lead in the 29th minute. That would end up being the difference in the game. 1-0 would be your final score between these two sides. No late game, Villian Bijev magic here, but he'd come awfully close off the woodwork. Right post, Villian Bijev nearly puts it in. It's outside the stretch of Austin Pack. And then we also did have a red card in this game late in the match. Adrian Vera sent off the pitch. And when it was at a moment, where Central Valley Fuego were starting to really conjure up some chances, some moments to find an equalizer. But anytime you go down a man, that's going to deflate your sails even just a little bit. Then later that day, Lexington and Greenville, you'd see here a straight red card challenge. Cesar Murillo, the former Greenville Triumph player, the one guilty of it. And Greenville would capitalize. What a week for the Greenville Triumph. No wins, down several players. We're able to get a win at home on Wednesday, turn around and get a win on the road against Lexington on Saturday. Noah Pilato with the third goal in three games. And then late in the match, the icing on the cake, Leonardo Castro would get his first goal in Greenville Triumph colors. Just putting that one well beyond the reach of the keeper. Austin Kazi could not get to it. And that's an account being opened for Mr. Castro. One of hopefully many for the Triumph if you are a part of John Harks' side. 2-0, your final score there. And then during the middle of the week, we had a couple of Open Cup matches, and although no League One teams were able to come out with a victory against some staunch foes, we did have a couple of great goals. Mateus Cassini just letting this one fly. He could just score a magical goal, can't he? And he'll be looking to hone that talent in the USL League One season for the rest of it, even if it's not going to be in an Open Cup run. 4-1, your final score there. Charlotte were able to get the victory over Tormenta. And Union Omaha trying to have another US Open Cup run. It wouldn't meant to be, but Pedro Dolabella would get one for the Owls in this one against St. Louis City SC. It ended up being a rather lopsided game. St. Louis City. And large margin of victory, 5-1 in that scoreline on Thursday. And then one other goal would be scored for League One sides. This one for Northern Colorado Hailstorm against the Colorado Rapids. Look at Jackson Dietrich. No, he's got the talent. He's been around in League One for a couple years now. Always has that goal scoring capability, but it end up being a 3-1 scoreline in favor of the MLS side over this League One team. But with that in mind, the Hailstorm, Tormenta, and Omaha all tied for the furthest runs and also had a win against a higher division team in their run are going to split that division three prize. With that in mind, we're going to step aside. When we come back, we have more halftime content coming your way on ESPN+.
But let's be honest, most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. drink and drive all the time. Sir. Sir, you've been in a serious crash. I need you to head off, okay? Love your name, sir. Do you know where you are right now? I need to try it first. Yeah. We continue with halftime here. Chattanooga and Lexington are scoreless. News and notes, USL League One. And the USL announcing this week the departure of President Jake Edwards. A remarkable 10-year tenure. Eight is president coming to an end. He is the reason the USL is the thriving soccer organism it is. Dozen Academy signings. North Carolina, 12 NC Academy players to USL Academy contracts. All eligible to play first team matches while maintaining their eligibility. And the player of the week, Lucas Coutinho in USL League One. And he's joined by Pilato and Castro, as well as Polak in his Greenville Triumph cohorts. They are losing tonight, though, to North Carolina. Oh, Austin Pack, goalkeeper for Charlotte. On the team of the week, USL League One scoreboard. Full time earlier tonight, forward Madison and Charlotte, nil nil. North Carolina, right now in real time, top of the table. They're up 2 0 on Greenville. Tormenta and Richmond in a delay there in South Georgia. And a half hour in Union Omaha. Northern Colorado, Hailstorm, no score as well. Here's our schedule upcoming in USL League One. Tomorrow, you won't want to miss it, 7 o'clock. Central Valley Fuego and one Knoxville midweek. Three matches, two matches I should say. Charlotte and Greenville. Knoxville welcomes forward Madison. Then Friday, Richmond has Union Omaha. Tormenta travels right here to Chattanooga. And at 10 o'clock late night, it'll be Fuego hosting North Carolina. One final break, second half kickoff on the way. No score, Chattanooga and Lexington. It's USL League One on ESPN Plus. I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The future is in these foothills. The world's fastest internet from EPB is in homes from Hickson to Highland Park. In classrooms from East Lake to East Brainerd. And in reach of those striving to learn more, be more, achieve more. The future is here with fiber optic speeds up to 25 gigs only from EPB. There's a beat in all of us. It drives us, it inspires us, and it pushes us through. It is there in preparation, it is there in battle, it is there in defeat, and success. It's the engine, it's our God. And this beat is my own. This beat is how I live. And this is how I hydrate. Body, I'm a sport water. 
hydration for athletes. It's here, Ford Truck Month. Come and get the best deals on Ford F-150. The only truck to offer available pro power on board and an interior work surface so you can get it all done. All part of Ford F-Series, America's best-selling truck, 46 years straight and counting. Get 2.9 for 60 plus up to 2,500 with eligible trade-in. Learn more about pickup and delivery and remote service at your local Ford dealer. I need to try it first. Yeah. It's humid, trying to get our cameras to have the moisture clear so we can give you the clearest shot possible. We're still looking for a shot that finds the back of the net here in Chattanooga. Nil-nil, Red Wolves and Lexington Sporting Club highlights. There were opportunities in the opening few minutes. It's Tate Robertson, left-footed blast, but Ricardo Jerez getting his first start of the season comes up with the save. Chattanooga, they have struggled on the attack all season long to this point. Their opening month has been rough, but they did push the envelope, burning a corner there. This was maybe the best opportunity, not even a shot on goal to show for it. Look at this cross from Robertson. Beautiful off his right foot. Do you? Completely unmarked. Will that be looking around saying, where is any help? Where is anybody? But do you put it wide? Late in the half, left-footed shot from Nico Brown. Couldn't make it through traffic. Bicycle kick attempt through Patterson right at Ricardo Jerez. That was the second save of the night for Jerez, and it stayed nil-nil. The numbers from the opening, 45. Five shots for Lexington, two on target. Chattanooga had two shots, have not put one on target tonight. 52-48 possession for Chattanooga and Lexington. True to its identity so far this season with two yellow cards. They have had their issues being put in the books so far in this 2023 campaign. So those are a look at your first half numbers, Chattanooga and Lexington. Let's go ahead and get you steady here for the second half. You see the Lexington bench. After tonight, Lexington has a pretty lengthy layoff. They won't play again until next Saturday. They've got a two week rest before they take on Charlotte. Meanwhile, Chattanooga, they're back at it. This coming Friday, hosting Tormenta. Tormenta right now has a weather delay in its match. It's Tormenta and Richmond. We'll let you know when that game gets underway. North Carolina continuing to have its way with Greenville Triumph, 2-0, 76th minute. Tahara for Chattanooga. The whistle blows, second half underway. Can one of these sides find the breakthrough that delivers it a much needed three points in the table? We will see how the drama unfolds here in the final 45. Ken Levicka with you, CHI Memorial Stadium in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And an early whistle and an early free kick coming. Here's Lexington. Robertson, it found its way all the way through the box in a left-footed attempt. Is blocked away at the last moment by Bainham. He can't believe it. That ball navigated nearly the entire length of the area. Finally linked up with Bainham. And then that is when a Chattanooga body made contact with ball and it was Mikhail Williams at the last moment making the defensive play. Boy, that cross from Robertson traveled an unbelievable distance. 
And it'll be Robertson to take the corner here for Lexington Sporting Club. Robertson approaches, sends it in with pace, but headed away from goal and headed out of trouble. Flamini able to retrieve for Lexington. Temperature right now, right around 70 degrees. This is punched out by Jerez. Well done by him in traffic with conviction. And back on the ball and pushing it back to the midfield is Lexington. Machel. Contact and a free kick for Lexington. Varela can't believe it. Robertson lays on the turf. Robertson and our referee Austin Saini have any conversation. This is the first official meeting between Chattanooga and Lexington. It's about a four hour and 15 minute drive between those two cities. Lexington to the northwest of the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Chattanooga right here in the southeast portion of Tennessee. Robertson, long delivery right at Headings. No issues with that. Heathers took a bit of exception to Patterson coming up from behind him, making contact with his arm, which was clutching the ball. But moved on from it quickly. Ricardo Heathers signed with Chattanooga in January of this year, January the 23rd to be exact. Some room to operate on the far side. Green lobs this high into the air, and there is Jerez again. He's been busy here in the opening four minutes of this second half, but hasn't really been tested. He's just been involved often. Chad Nugent, it's 3-0 defeat to North Carolina last Friday. Was beaten on two long balls over the top and a ball that was played through the back line. Very vertical for North Carolina, very effective. And Ziggy Korotowski saying this week, hey, that's fixable. You see that, we played well other than the three goals conceded. You like what you see on film, you learn from it. Tonight, Chattanooga's done well when Lexington has attempted to go vertical. And Lombardi is down in the box. It's a goal kick here for Lexington Sporting Club. Lombardi's gonna roll over. Looks like he might have taken a little bit of contact to the chest. Maybe the wind knocked out of him. Let's see here, Lombardi. Yep. I don't think he was sitting there trying to appeal for a foul. He told the referee, hold on, just give me a moment. He got hit in the diaphragm. That'll do it. Doesn't look like, though, he is breathing too laboriously. There's been one substitution in this match, an injury substitution, Tariq Muhammad for Lexington. Just shy of the midway point of the first half, gave way to Drew Patterson after suffering an ankle injury, tried to give it a go after the injury, only lasted about two minutes though. Tried to make a tackle, committed a foul, started clutching at that problematic left ankle again, and that was it for him. Varela has just been called for a foul as he takes Nico Brown to the turf. And the card is coming out for Varela. So that is the first Chattanooga booking tonight. There's been two for Lexington, and now the first for Chattanooga, and it is shown to the Cape Verde native, Walter Varela. Certainly a bit aggressive there from Varela. 
first year Chattanooga man. Played under Ziggy Korotowski of Albion San Diego. That's Nisa. Had three goals, four assists in 19 appearances. Tate Robertson in the midfield for Lexington. He has certainly been a pretty large presence tonight for the visitors. He whips that three kick into the box for Chattanooga as they've done all night tonight. Stubborn when Lexington is showing some promise attacking goal. Ooh, that got a little bit dicey. Mikhail Williams was pleading with Hedes to come make a play on that ball. Probably could have done something himself, but Hedes finally able you know, to come up and blast that beyond the midfield strike. Nico Brown on to Diouf. Roll to the top of the box. Touched on. Chattanooga wins it back. Patterson couldn't maintain possession, but a bad giveaway by Mo Espinoza, but he had support. Chattanooga on the move. Riley Kraft. Moves it back to Williams. Now off to Lombardi. Perella, who was shown a card moments ago, plays through. Barella, like that to Hera, couldn't get there, and Causey falls on. Defended well, ultimately. Coca-Cola is the exclusive soft drink of the Chattanooga Red Wolves. That's Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, not a bad refreshing option. Humidity, it's noticeable, 72% here. In Chattanooga tonight with those 68 degree temperatures. That's the refreshing part from a weather component. And a goal kick. Nico Brown couldn't earn himself a trip to the flag. Check out the new 2023 Chattanooga Red Wolves kit along with t-shirts, scarves, novelty items, and a whole lot more at chattanoogaredwolves-sc.com. Manuel Madrid plays it out of the back. Madrid did not make the trip with the team in North Carolina last Friday, wasn't with the club. His mother passed away. We certainly are thinking about him and his family. His teammates put out a tribute to him, a photograph with his jersey, his kit, on Twitter in a show of solidarity with their teammate. Diouf for Lexington. On the turn, defers. Robertson pushes it right on to Diouf. Robertson seventh in USL League One and crosses coming into tonight with 23. He's had a bunch here this evening. True to form, Fox. Now Diouf. Blasts the ball to the top of the area, popped high into the air by Madrid. Now a battle for it. Takes a high hop off this artificial surface. And Bainham is called for the foul. Draws the whistle a bit. Too physical battling for that 50-50 ball. He's a native of Brisbane, Australia, is Will Bainham. Good size, 6'2". His youth career began with AFC Bournemouth. And he decided he was going to become educated in the United States. Played at UC Santa Barbara to finish off his college career. Espinoza for Chattanooga. Can that find the target? No, Varela had cut inside. I don't think he thought then that delivery was going to make it to him. But once Green 
misjudged that ball. Varela could have had a clear path to the box. If he would have stayed on that direct path, it, he was making the run. Foul from behind against Robertson. And Spinoza wants to get play started. Instead, he'll let Walefi come up. Manuel Madrid. Espinoza onto his right foot. Espinoza denied. Short corner save, Austin Causey. There's the first shot on target tonight for the host side. A corner coming for Chattanooga as we get another glance at this. Nifty individual effort from Espinoza. Forces the save and that was indeed on target. Causey ranging to his left to close down the post. A corner for Chattanooga. As the fans make noise here at CHI. This will be a left footed in swinger. Here it comes, headed away. Now Lexington, will they have some room to operate? The answer is no. We have a whistle and an injured player behind the play. And a yellow has been shown in the aftermath of that injured Lexington player to Andrew Paoli. So now both teams have two players in the 11 on a card. Let's see what happened here. We'll get a better look at it. Yeah, high boot. High boot to Robertson. Not intentional in any way from Paoli, but definitely reckless. And we have wholesale substitutions, it appears here, for Chattanooga. Let's get you caught up here. Walter Varela comes off for Mayeli Malongo. Rapapa Mensa will take Alex Tejera off the pitch. And Siobhan Marsh takes Mo Espinoza to the bench. So Maya Malongo is on again. Ropapa Mensa enters as well. And Siobhan Marsh. Oh, got an issue there along the touchline. So Espinoza apparently is staying on. The indication was that Marsh was taking him off. So you see Ziggy Koritaski is over there to try and sort out. So we know Malongo for Varela. That's good to go. Thumbs up on that. Marsh is actually going to take Paoli off. And it was. And Rapapa Mensa for Alex Tejera. That was correct right off the jump. So. Mo Espinosa for Chattanooga will remain in the match, but Paoli, who is on a yellow, he's off for Marsh. Varela, who is on a yellow, he's off for Malungo. And then Metza is going to take over at the top of this 4-2-3-1 for Ziggy Karatoski. Karatoski, who has spent a lot of his coaching career in Central America. Known for his attacking sides, consistency, the discipline, trying to bring that here to Chattanooga. Okay. 
Chattanooga last season. Jimmy Weekly in an interim role. Fantastic work. Espinosa, speaking of fantastic work, into the clear, tries to chip it over, Causey. May have been looking for a late run back post from Malongo. Either way, it sails across the end line, and he's frustrated with himself. Espinosa had a ton of real estate, and I really think he was trying to test Causey. Malongo was really nowhere near the play until that ball had landed out of play. The USL is on ESPN. Paco Craig leads Miami FC in Kentucky to face Josh Winder in the reigning Eastern Conference Championship winners. Louisville City FC don't miss the start of the new season of the USL on ESPN. Saturday, May 13th, 7 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. It's the USL on ESPN. Jimmy Weekly in an interim role. I was discussing Chattanooga last season, interim role last year. This Chattanooga club, eight victories, four defeats, five draws, and a pair of postseason wins, a trip to the USL League One Championship match. Chattanooga, after Jimmy Obleda was removed from the club, an investigation for conduct, and Weekly took over the interim role. Seven unbeaten. That really jump-started Chattanooga back into a playoff conversation, eventually a potential championship conversation. Obleda and Chattanooga decided to part ways at the conclusion of the season. And that's where Ziggy Koratowski comes in. The attendance tonight here in Chattanooga, 2,388. At CHI Memorial Stadium, the first match here at this venue, August 1st, 2020. FC Tucson was the opponent, but this was supposed to open April 25th of that year against Richmond, but the COVID-19 pandemic ended hopes that that would be able to take place. Chattanooga poking and prodding. And have not been able to, other than one Mo Espinoza attempt, put themselves in a position to put a shot on target. Quick restart after Cordona was delivered to the turf. Kale Williams has had a strong night defensively tonight for Chattanooga. Chattanooga has started to slow the pace a bit again. This is headed forward, the chase is on, and this is either a foul or knocked out of play. The answer is it's a foul, much to the dismay of Rapapa Mensa and the Chattanooga bench. Not much doing either attack here. As we are approaching the midway point of this second half. Now Chattanooga, as soon as I say that, trying to push forward. Malongo. Malongo into the area, offside netting. Siobhan Marsh, difficult angle. And it did take a deflection. This is gonna be a corner. Now you see Malongo full sprint. Short feed, and Causey 
was forced to make a save. Thought initially that was into side netting because he had to poke at it. In the 67th minute, here's the corner. And a foul. It was Espinoza who had grabbed a handful of jersey of Kalen Fox. That corner was presented by Ford, the official domestic car partner of the Chattanooga Red Wolves. He's taking some uncomfortable bouncy travel to Causey. He was able to handle it well. And now Lexington on the run. Diouf to his left foot. Puts it on his right. Diouf unleashes a shot! And it's knocked out of play. Ranging and stretching Ricardo Jerez. He's looked confident in goal tonight for Chattanooga. Diouf decided to give it a go. It was a good decision. And that is a shot on target. Jerez absolutely had to come up and make a play on that and a corner for Lexington. All of a sudden, this has become free flowing between these two sides after about 10 minutes of stagnant attacking behavior. Ted Robertson, former Chattanooga FC man. Didn't get a lot on that corner. Nico Brown knees it. The flag stays down, that was dangerous. And it sails out of play. Jerez is upset. He thought there was contact. That should draw some sort of card. Maitzel was in there. Diouf was in there. Brown punched it off to the right-hand side. Diouf with the delivery. There was contact. Maitzel and Jerez. And... Perez, I think, was trying to put a little extra sauce on that contact at the end. Well, to say his trajectory of fall wasn't exactly suggestive of somebody who got hit extremely hard from the direction he was trying to sell he got hit. Right, you got to make the referee think about it. 70th minute. Malongo. Now Cardona. Espinosa. Diminutive but dangerous. Will either team be able to unlock the other and find a goal in this match? It looked likely in the opening half. Less likely here. For the first 20 minutes of the second half until the last five have seen a sudden surge in attacking prowess. Is it coming right here? No, it was an extremely heavy touch from Marsh and Causey able to gather the ball. Well, Malongo put it on a platter, but Marsh a bit clunky as he trying to play himself forward. That allowed Green time to recover and Causey time to range over and fall on it. Patterson pushes it back to Mitchell. This is popped into the middle. Patterson couldn't do anything with it, instead sends it out wide. Nico Brown on the move. Uh, Robertson trying to play a little one-two there with Brown, who took to the turf and it rolled out of play. And Brown might have been caught up with Cardona. You're gonna see Will Bainham depart here for Lexington. So-so Kim, the 
Overland Park, Kansas native. We'll take him off for appearance number four in 2023. Spent time early in his career in the Sporting Kansas City Academy. Played at both Duke and UC Santa Barbara in his collegiate career. Most recently played for Chicago House, a U.S. Open Cup darling. So Sam Stockley looking for a bit more from his attack here. Sends in Soso Kim, but Chattanooga right now looking to push into the attacking third. Marsh, a good battle along that touchline, earning a throw in, but Lexington is it given right back by Riley Kraft. Flamini to Diouf. Diouf off to the races. Tate Robertson. Back post cross, too high, out of play. Patterson wasn't going to be able to get there. He was also marked by three Chattanooga defenders. Body armor is the official sports drink of the Chattanooga Red Wolves. Make it body armor. This crowd of nearly 3,000 has been privy to a fascinating battle here tonight. Madrid with Kim lurking had to make a play on that and it concedes a corner to Lexington. CHI Memorial Stadium here in Chattanooga this season and in 2024 is going to host the Division II NCAA men's and women's soccer semifinals and men's championship matches. Certainly a venue that is deserving of high profile events like that. A great place to watch soccer here domestically. Here's the in swinging corner headed away job done. And then Blamini sends it into the Chattanooga night. Feels like there are some tired legs here on both sides. Chattanooga has made three substitutions. Lexington with two. One of those, though, coming fairly early in the first half. Well done by... So, so Kim to force Madrid to punch it out of play. Another corner coming, second time that Kim here in the last minute has been involved in earning his team a corner, making an immediate impact after being substituted on. He's had USL League Two stints, was in the USL Championship with Oakland Roots. The corner. And it's pushed over the top by Jerez, and it's another corner on the way. Jerez had his teammates trying to convince the referee, no, it just hit the top netting, but no, Jerez punched it over, tipped it over, more appropriately, more accurately. Tate Robertson approaches. This is headed into danger. Cleared off. The line, but out of play again, and this time it'll be a corner from the other side, so Robertson's gonna retreat from near corner to far corner. Lexington's getting its money's worth here from corner set pieces. No, Robertson actually is gonna receive the short corner. And he'll deliver here from outside the area. That's headed away. Nothing's been particularly dangerous. There's a turnover though, Delamini read that well. Able to turn and launch was Lombardi into the seats. And Lexington, three consecutive corners 
but nothing was ever particularly nail biting for that Chattanooga defense. Nico Brown played off the ball and then commits a foul from behind. He clipped the back heel of Mikhail Williams. Perez sends this on its way. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last call for alcohol. Alango. Well done by Machel to get in that passing lane and Lexington back on the ball. Machel wants Robertson. Robertson. Plays it on to Kim, so-so Kim. Step over, able to make it through the defender. Kim, oh, it's beautiful! The substitute with the goal in the 78th minute. So-so Kim, highlight rail, 1-0 to Lexington Sporting Club. How good is this from So-So Kim? Five hole nutmeg, onto the right foot, and blasts it past Harris, who didn't stand a chance. There was nothing he could do. Madrid unable to close it down, and So-So Kim gives Lexington the 1-0 lead. That was beautiful. I mean, just gorgeous individual effort from So-So Kim. His first goal in a Lexington shirt. So now Chattanooga, who has had its opportunities tonight, having to play catch up here at home. Malongo kept it in play. Malongo trying to do it himself. And he does earn Chattanooga a corner. Miguel Malongo has been strong since coming on as a second half substitute. Kraft will place the ball and deliver this set piece. Kraft sends it into the box. It hit the bottom of the post. It's headed in. We're level. Nico Cardona as it bounced off the post. Heads it in. An immediate equalizer. Business is picked up in a big way here in Chattanooga. It's only the third goal of the season. Williams put it off the bottom of the post. It bounces right to Cardona. And with Causey on his back, Cardona able to find the back of the net. One, one, game on. Oh, this has gotten wild here in Tennessee. The 80th minute goal for Nico Cardona off a wild scrambled bodies all over the place in front of goal. And there's a Lexington injury on the play. You saw Causey trying to tell the referee, hey, you should have bone played dead. Mikhail Williams moved the goal when he ran into the right post that's Nico Brown who has suffered a knock he's gonna hobble off at least momentarily 
And if Nico Brown had suffered a knock, that's an easy decision for Sam Stockley to make. Hey, let's send in someone to fortify the defense. But now with things all level again, you've got to think about keeping an effective attacking player on the pitch. And there is life in this building now. Causey problems with it. Chattanooga has the lead. Unbelievable. Causey slipped and has handed the lead to Chattanooga. Rapopa Mensa. Chattanooga two, Lexington one. The most unlikely of ways to take the lead on a platter. Mensa started all of this, blocking that pass, and then Causey slips down. Mensa trickles it through. Mensa had to travel an unbelievable amount of real estate after blocking that pass. And he forced Causey into a bad decision. An uncertain decision. And it pays off for Rapopa Mensa. Two to one, Chattanooga. Lexington has got to settle itself. This is meltdown mode for the visitors. And look at this, Chattanooga on the run again. Marsh on the Malongo. Malongo! He wanted to pick out Kraft, but could not get a good right foot on it. All oh, the momentum for Chattanooga. Down 1-0. Only two goals on the season. And in the snap of a finger, they not only equalize, but then take the lead. And a yellow for Manuel Madrid of Chattanooga. You heard Austin Saini say, it's unnecessary. Madrid a bit physical and trying to stall a bit as well. Cardona is going to throw in here for Chattanooga. He scored the first goal that drew things level before Rapapa Mensa forced the goalkeeper mishap and collected the goal. Alongo cut off from that ball by Seha. Eighty sixth minute. Can Chattanooga hang on? Substitutions. Sigi Koritaski once again going to work. Pedro Hernandez is going to take. Mo Espinoza off. And Felipe Laborio is going to give Riley Kraft the rest of the evening off. So four of the five Chattanooga midfielders have been substituted off here tonight. The only Surviving midfielder from the starting 11 is Walefi. He is no stranger to putting in Herculean minutes. Lexington desperately looking for a second. They briefly had a 1 0 advantage after a wonder strike from So So Kim. There's a foul. 
as Marsh is whistled. Coming over the top of Pila Dlamini. Lexington has bodies up. Jalen James is headed on for Drew Patterson. And we also have Khalid Balogun to take off the youth. Sam Stockley desperately looking for somebody who can draw things even. We don't yet have an indication of what stoppage time is going to look like. Can't imagine it's going to be anything overly significant. Perez takes a leap over that ball to win the goal kick. All three goals have come in this second half. So, so Kim, the second half substitute for Lexington got things going, but then just two and a half minutes later, off of a wild scramble in front of the net, Mikhail Williams for Chattanooga blasted a header off the bottom of the crossbar. Alfredo Cardona, could this be a third? Oh, what a save! Causey with the right hand, denying Pedro Hernandez. Oh my goodness. How did Causey keep that from becoming the third goal for Chattanooga? It was Cardona with the equalizer and then Literal seconds later, Miguel Malongo blocked a pass that bounced all the way into the Chattanooga attacking third. It was played onto the Lexington goalkeeper, Austin Causey. He slipped trying to distribute it. It fell right to the feet of Malongo, who scored to make it two to one. And that's the difference right now, is nearly three to one, if not for Austin Causey. Just possessed in the midfield. Mensa. Off to Marsh. Marsh turns the corner. Marsh to the middle. That shot blocked away. Hernandez couldn't fit it through space. And play is stopped. It's been brought to my attention that Soso Kim, the Lexington goal scorer, his Twitter handle is Korean Loverboy. And so while right now things look bleak for Lexington, at least take great solace in the fact that Soso Kim has an outstanding Twitter handle. Five minutes of stoppage time here. Lombardi is upset with that call. He's got to get back and play defense as Lexington looks for a free kick. Through stretches of this match, Lexington has been the better side. Lexington fans surely right now thinking this may be a harsh result for their side. But Chattanooga put the pressure on in the right moments. This will bounce into the area. This is played away by Madrid and a corner. He went soaring to send that into the advertising boards across the end line. There's an injured Lexington player laying to the top of the box. 
That's Nico Brown again, who's grabbing at the right side of his head. He went off earlier with an ankle issue. He's pleading his case to the referee, who says, let's get ready for the corner. And Chattanooga has handled these corners extremely well, and there have been a lot of them for Lexington, especially in this second half. That was a good ball forward. Tate Robertson fell to the turf, got back up. Still fighting for it, and he's called for a foul. That was quite the battle. They're approaching the midway point of the five additional minutes. Chattanooga looking to hang on. Send these nearly 3,000 fans home happy on a Saturday night. And what a wild comeback it has been. Had to come back from down a goal against one Knoxville on April 8th. A whistle behind the play called against Chattanooga. Had to come back for a two to one victory over one Knoxville. And now Chattanooga in a similar fashion trying to do the same to the other first year side in USL League One at Lexington Sporting Club. Frustration starting to boil over here for Lexington. Kate Robertson just blasted a ball into the boards on the far side. Lexington has had an immense amount of set pieces, corner kicks, and only the one goal from Soso Kim left the door open for a Chattanooga attacking spurt. And Chattanooga took advantage. Attacking third throw in for Lexington. One minute left to go. Robertson. This is headed into the box. Perhaps an opportunity for Kalen Fox. It's out of his reach. And I knew it is Marsh. Look out. Marsh with a jet pack behind him. Tried to deliver it to his left-hand side, Kalen Fox. Able to break up that opportunity. Desperation time for Lexington Sporting Club. And they hand possession right back to Chattanooga. Austin Causey, last gasp time for Sam Stockley's side. Machel. High into the air. Chattanooga handles it well. Great poise defensively. The size of Malongo. It is so hard to take him off the ball. Malongo! Miguel Malongo says, I'll do it myself. Three points for Chattanooga. A third goal for Chattanooga. What a second half performance. He would not be denied. Mayel Malongo just blasting right through everybody and sends it past Austin Causey, an electrifying second half performance for Chattanooga Red Wolves. I would say the attack is alive and well. The storyline coming in, why can't Chattanooga score? The storyline coming out, Chattanooga can score. <laughs> 
And there have been some major league efforts from Chattanooga substitutes tonight. There's the final whistle. Match over. Behind three second half tallies, Chattanooga blasts to three points in the USL League One table. Chattanooga three, Lexington Sporting Club one. And Chattanooga Red Wolves able to end a frustrating scoring drought. They break through for three. And route to the 3-1 win, and there's a happy head coach, Ziggy Kuratowski. He pushed the right buttons off the bench, including this man, Rapopo Mensa. The man of the match brought to you by Timbercraft Whiskey. Mensa able to block a pass and then range all the way down the pitch to force the goalkeeper, Austin Causey, into a mistake that fell right to the feet of Mensa. He would score to give Chattanooga the two to one advantage, a lead they would not relinquish. There's Nico Cardona, whose immediate response to the Lexington breakthrough goal made it 1-1 and made the comeback possible. Here is the save of the match here tonight. And it was this first half stop of a bicycle kick attempt. Ricardo Jerez able to shut down Drew Patterson's attempt at magic at the Chattanooga Hotel. Save the match, Ricardo Jerez, who picks up his first goalkeeping win in a Chattanooga uniform. Rapopo Mensa, one of several heroes for Chattanooga. The celebration is on. Chattanooga Red Wolves three, Lexington Sporting Club one. Post game show after this, it's USL League One on ESPN Plus. I need to try it first. Yeah. The future is in these foothills. The world's fastest internet from EPB is in homes from Hickson to Highland Park. In classrooms from East Lake to East Brainerd. And in reach of those striving to learn more, be more, achieve more. The future is here with fiber optic speeds up to 25 gigs only from EPB. I drink and drive all the time. Sir, sir, you've been in a serious crash. I need you to head out, okay? Love your name, sir. You are right now. Head out. I need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A three to one victory. Chattanooga Red Wolves able to take down a Lexington Sporting Club here tonight at CHI Memorial Stadium. Three points in the table for the home side. Who had all sorts of goal scoring issues coming in. Those were remedied in a big way in the second 45. Let's go through full time highlights. Brought to you by CHI Memorial. And the goal scoring got started. Minute number 78. So, so Kim, after coming on as a substitute, step over. Nutmeg onto his right foot. Look at that plant for So, so Kim. What a phenomenal goal. Just leaving defenders in his wake. Madrid too slow to close down. And Chattanooga was down 1-0, Lexington taking the lead. But just two minutes later, off of this Chattanooga corner, Williams, header, off the bar, Cardona there to clean it up. Beats Austin Causey, was flat on his back. Causey pleading his case, saying, 
Hey, the goal moved. I was fouled. The referee says, uh-uh. Nico Cardona, you have equalized immediately. And then just two minutes after that, look at the individual effort here. Rapopo Mensa blocks the pass. It's played back to Austin Causey. Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh no. Mensa, two to one, Chattanooga. This will sting, this one will hurt. On the trip back home to Lexington, Mensa made it all happen. That's as good as you're gonna see defensively and on the attack all in the literal same moment. And then how about this? Mayel Malongo would not be denied. 96th minute, leaves no doubt. Three to one, Chattanooga, all three points. And he does it with a relentless run. That was something for everybody, the way Chattanooga put up its three, the way all of the goals were scored tonight. In fact, a bit of beauty, a bit of grace, a bit of brutality across the board. Full-time numbers brought to you by Smart Bank. Nine shots for both teams, six on target for Chattanooga. Lexington with four, 52-48 possession for Chattanooga. Three yellow cards for the victors. Lexington was shown two cards. Chattanooga Red Wolves, for the second time this season, they come back for a home victory and keep Lexington from the first road win in franchise history. For Brady Kujawa and his entire production staff, I'm Ken Levicka. Your final score for a final time, Chattanooga Red Wolves 3, Lexington Sporting Club 1. Have a great rest of your weekend. This has been USL League 1 on ESPN+. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League, League One, cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League, League One.